Hey, what's up, man? It's Kev B. I'm back, man, Mr. Believe. And today we're going to talk about Turo and having a plan. Yeah, so today, as you can see, I'm coming from my living room. Uh, so I'm going to be taking you guys to my dry erase board. I'm going to cut to that. And I already have it written up, so I'm just gonna explain to you. It's a bunch of numbers on there. Um, I don't have my my phone stand for some reason. I can't find it right now. So, but I just had to get this information out before I forgot. I kept saying that I was gonna come to you guys and show you a breakdown. So this is just a very basic breakdown. But I, I'm a nerd, so I like doing stuff like this. Like I said, I already have another business. So when I came into Turo, I had a plan. If you don't have a plan, it's gonna be very difficult for you to make money because if you think you're just gonna be catching Ubers or you're just gonna be getting services from wherever and it's not really, whatever, like, you gotta have a plan. So you gotta know what you're doing and you gotta keep track of where you're spending money, how you're spending money to make sure you're making money. That's what everybody's in business for, cash flow. You're not in the business time to lose money, we're trying to gain money, right? So I'm gonna see you guys and we're gonna get to the board. Let's go. All right, so here we go. As you can see, I have it. I had the tarot booked from, excuse me, January 18th to January 23rd. The booking was for $132.50. It was a $15 post trip cleaning that was added to it. So it really would have been $117.50. So we're gonna go with that number in the beginning. I'm gonna show you why these are very, very important and key to get these. Now, first of all, we have three main charges that you're gonna to have to uh, take care of when you're taking care of your Turo, at least what I focus on. T is your travel. That's basically how you get into or from. If you don't have a ride, which can save you a lot more money, obviously, but we're just saying, if you're just doing it by yourself and you're the lone soldier, travel. Definitely have to think about that. Then after travel, cleaning, cleaning the car. You wanna make sure you clean the car before every trip. So you include that in your cost. Every trip, cleaning, and then maintenance. So what I did since this trip was for about one week, I think it was six or seven days. You do the math, I think it was six days. That's the average. In a month, you got four weeks. So it's the average of what I could make, $117. So I divided what my maintenance would be for the month by four. And I took a couple of things, what I would do in a month. I'll probably get, probably be depending on uh, how my bookings are. I usually get the car serviced in between at most three, two times, maybe three times, depending on what's going on. But I went with a worst case scenario and we're gonna go with three. So this month I got the brakes, the alignment and the air filter done. And we're gonna break down what those costs were. So I divided it by four because after each trip, if I was booked one week in the month, you want to make sure that each trip contributes to the maintenance. One trip can't just pay for the whole maintenance trip. That's why I say you have to have a plan. You have to budget it out. You got to plan it out. You got to run it like it's a business. Unless you're just doing it for fun, just to drive your car and to help you on your car note, cool. But if you're really trying to run a business and make some cash flow, I think you should run it like this or have a plan. Don't run it like me. Have a plan and run it what works for you. So maintenance, and I'm gonna break down these numbers right now. So brakes, this is the dealer, dealer prices. So brakes, the dealer price was 190. Alignment, the dealer price is $107. And the air filter, the dealer price was 50 bucks. Now I rounded it up because this was like 189, this was like 49, and this was like 106 and change, whatever. I just rounded it up so we could have whole numbers. And at the end of the month, if I was gone to the dealer to get all three services, I would wind up paying $347 for the month. That's not including insurance. Remember that, keep that in mind at the end of this video. That's not including insurance. Divide that by four, you get $87 which hence the $87 over here. Now, other, we have the brakes, other. I went to, uh, I guess we call it off-brand dealer, but they specialize in brakes. They've been doing brakes for 25 years. 
I went to them just to explore something different, just so I can meet different mechanics. I did my research on them. I like them. He was very thorough. You know what I'm saying? The basic price for the brakes was 120. 120 bucks. So what did I just save myself right there? $70. Bam, $70. Next, alignment. Now, I didn't find a place I wanted to go to for alignment, so I pretty much went to the dealer for alignment. So I paid $107. That's why it's the same price both ways. And the next one, air filter. Can you believe they were gonna charge me $50 for an air filter? So I just happily took my butt to AutoZone and got me an air filter for 10 bucks. 10 bucks, saved me 40 bucks right there. So this monthly service came up to $237. You divide that by four, $60 for the month. I mean, per trip, if they're for a week, just to keep the theme of what we got going here. So $60, that right there, you can't beat that. Now let's talk about travel. Now, I'm not even taking taxi because taxi is the highest expense, most expensive tra traveling. If we're going to the airport, for me, the airport is a few miles away. So, taking the Uber, it's on average. And that's if you're catching it at good times. I've seen it when it's been up to $45, almost $50. And sometimes you can't even take pool. It's just crazy sometimes. So, on average, on a good, I'm talking about on an average on a good day. On an average good day, not an average rush hour time like that, which sometimes you do get. On an average good day, it's about 30 bucks. The last time I took an Uber was about 28, uh, one coming up, and then it was like about 31 going down. So, or 33. So on average, it's about 30 bucks. And the, and the times were, one time was like five o'clock in the morning, the one that was actually 33. And the one that was, um, it was about six or seven in the evening. That one was actually 28. So, hey, 30 bucks is the average. So that's two trips because you're gonna have to take the car there. Once you drop the car off, hey, you don't have a car now. So you're gonna have to take the car back. Now you can alleviate that, but if you plan ahead and you have different things in place, but this is just for the sake of this video, we're gonna keep it basic. Now on this side, you can take the bus. For me, I have to take two buses. The bus fare here is 225. So two buses down, five bucks. Two buses up, or you know, when I uh, come back after dropping off the car, five bucks. Or when I take the car, when I go to pick up the car from the airport, it's five bucks. So you do that twice, you got 10 bucks for this trip, 60 bucks for the Uber. And that's on average, so it could be more than 60. So these are the numbers that we're talking about. So remember, you want to wash before or after every trip just to make sure your vehicle is clean. I choose to wash my vehicles before every trip because I have a stipulation in there. If you bring the car back dirty, even though I am going to wash it before the next trip, you're making my wash that much more extra. So I have to be even more detailed. There's going to be a price for that. And what I charge for that is $15. And for luckily, no, what I charge for it is if you don't get the post trip clean, it's 20 bucks, 20 bucks. But if you get it prior, it was $15 for this trip. I've since uh, changed the price. So if you go look right now, it's, 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 it's higher. It is higher. It's 20 bucks for either one. So, <clears throat> so $7, which is how much I pay for my um, washes. If you watch the video prior to this, I showed you where I go to get my washes. Very basic. I take my rag, wipe down the car on the outside, back in the inside for free. Good to go. Now, this is the worst case scenario. If you're not planning it, you're just doing it, and you think you're just having fun, you're gonna go about, I'm catching Ubers, and oh, this is cool, and oh, I'll get my car done at the dealer, and, and hey, I get, I'm making money, I'm making money, I ain't gotta pay for it, the Uber paying for it, you're gonna come out $154, and that's being generous. Remember, Uber can be much different depending on the prices. You may have to get the car washed again afterwards if they didn't clean it, and that's an extra cost that you have to add to that vehicle for that one. Or, I mean, or just to having to wash the car extra hard if the person didn't clean it. So that's extra just back breaking work that goes into that $7 that you didn't account for. That's your time. And then $87, $87, like, come on, 154. Now I know you already see this one on the side, the bus, 10 bucks. Same price for the wash, even if I had to break my back. 
seven bucks. See that right there? 60 bucks just by being creative, going outside the box, not just sticking with a dealer, talking to people, learning the system, meeting new people. You're gonna have to do that. You're gonna have to have a mechanic. I have a mechanic, but he doesn't have certain machines and things. So you might have to find certain specialists because I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be the last time that I'm gonna get my brakes done. You know what I'm saying? And I don't wanna have to pay $200 because that's not including tax every time I go to the dealer. 60 bucks, $77. Now I know you guys see this red over here. It's red and it's green. Now with no plan, you made $117.50. Drop the 50, $117. You gotta contribute $154 from this trip. You're upside down. And you haven't even paid your insurance yet. Mmm. I think we got a problem. I think we are in trouble, trouble, trouble. Now, if you go over here and you have a plan, you've paid $77. And you have $40 in the green. Ding, 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 ding. Congratulations. You actually are making money. You do that four times a month, you've made $160. And if you have a very good PIP, you could be making $100 a month in cash flow. $100 extra dollars a month in cash flow. And that's just from one vehicle. I have two. And I have trips that were more than this, depending on the holiday. From Christmas, I had trips that were worth for seven days, about $170. I had a trip that was 10 days for $200. So these numbers can go up and then the extras. So you just add $15 to this one, you're still a negative. You're still negative. What, negative $22? Still? Negative $22, you still haven't even made any money for the month and you haven't paid your insurance. But over here, over here, that's $54 now. You're looking at almost $200 extra a month. And with good insurance, if you're below $75, you're making almost $500 a month. I mean, excuse me, not $500 a month. <laughs> you're making... You're making almost $200 a month. You're paying insurance of between $75 and $50. You're making almost $125 a month. An extra cash flow. And that's just one extra. Most of my trips come with extras. I have car seat extras. I have unlimited fuel extras. I have, uh, of course, the post-trip cleaning extra. I have the penalties for... Um, the fuel, which you can get reimbursements for. All of those things can be factors to help you make money. Now, if you just want to have fun and say you got a bunch of cars, cool. You got extra money to spare if you want to lose. But if you're trying to create cash flow and then do something with that cash flow, now you're talking. Because now you can take this extra $100 a month, take that, Use that to supply your candy machine. If you watched one of my previous videos about building your tribe, use that hundred dollars to buy the candy. Because all of this is all under the same LLC. My son has a separate account with his candy, but this has a um, Tarot has its separate account, but it's all under the same umbrella. Cost of works, cost of goods, all money in. The candy's already paid for now. Now my son never has to put in money for candy. Now he's just stacking money for his future. An extra, an extra $125. The candy comes up to $37. So he's stacking an extra $80 plus whatever he's making from the candy machine. That's how you create cash flow. You plan it out, you think it out, you do a budget. It doesn't have to be, this is not elaborate. Like I, I use, you know, spreadsheets and all that crazy stuff. You know, I like to get down and dirty with it. But you can do something basic like this, just write numbers. It's basic, simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That's it. And you can make money with Turo. 
yeah, man. So that's basically it, man. I promise on the next video that I will have my stand. Uh, we got a, a great stand with the light. You know, the light that got the circle. And you look in people's eyes and you see the little circle in their eyes and you know they got the light in front of them. We got all that. But for some reason, we got the light, but the little stand in the middle is just like, I don't know, man. So we're going to get that fixed. So next time I come in the house and I'm going to do a teaching session, um, cause I want to do more of these, man. I like to just show people like, like this channel is all from the inside out. So I want to show you in depth what I'm doing with myself so that I can help as many people as I, as I can, man. Because when you, when you navigate in this jungle, man, it helps to have people that's like-minded like you to help you get there. When you have people around you, it helps you be stronger. And when you share tips, advice, it just, it sharpens you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just letting you know what I do. You know, I do my spreadsheets. You know, I, I, I do my push-ups. I do my meditation. I do all that, man. And all of that comprises of me creating the, the best entrepreneur that I can be from the inside out. Number one, I'm being the best entrepreneur that I can be from the inside out because if I'm not good, nothing else is going to flow. I'm the bag. You're the bag. Remember that. If you ain't good, it's going to collapse. I don't even care if you're really doing good at some point. We've all seen those stars rise and then fall. But we've seen some stars that rise and stay there and sustain for a long period of time. And we call them great because they put in the work within themselves because they know who's the bag. They know that they are important. They protect their bodies. When you see those superstars like LeBron James and Michael Jordan, the reason why we call them great, like Kobe Bryant, is because they do it for an extended period of time. And trust me, if you go back and look at their regiment, they're putting time in their self, in their craft. Not just their craft. People think, oh, he shoots a thousand shots in the gym. But I bet you he probably had a regiment where he got massages every Tuesday. Where he probably did yoga every Wednesday. Where he probably went and did some meditation. Where he probably did some self-care. I guarantee he took care of his mental, his body, his physical. It wasn't just them shooting a thousand shots in the gym. You can go and do as much as you can. Because we've seen all those super talented athletes that just fizzle out, have one or two great years, and then just can't sustain it. Because you have to have something here, your mental, your body, from the inside, has to be pure and clean and from a, from a good state of mind. That's why mental health is so big, man. When you, when you grasp a hold of that, you move like a giant. So man, next time I'm gonna have a stand, next time I'm gonna do a teaching session, I won't do a teaching session without it. Bear with me. I just had to get this information to y'all, man. I just wanted to share that with you because I know people out there wanna know, can you really make money with Turo? You hear all these people always saying, they, you see all these people with all these fleets and all these cars and it's possible. They could be making a, a ton of money if they're doing it like that. And there's other tactics. You don't have to travel. You can have your Turo and just have people pick it up from your spot and you won't have no travel fee to pay at all. And that'll still help you out. But if you're always going to the dealer, that'll still eat into your profits. So I think it still would be cheaper. So if I'm charging people to go to the airport or I'm sending it at the house, I think it still kind of works out the same. So I'm making still about the same. But it's just all about what works for you. At the end of the day, you got to work that out. Play with the app, play with the platform. Check out my profile, link below. And uh, yeah, man, I'll catch y'all on the next one. Hey, I'm back, man. If you like these videos, you like the information that you're beginning, remember to subscribe, like, share, and comment at the end of these videos. And let's talk about it. Peace.